Good morning, Huntington Chapel. And those who are joining online, welcome. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You know, the Lord provides in many ways. And I thank God that he provides uh, us with employment. And there's a story that I'd like to read out of the Bible because it was during their job that these individuals were blessed beyond measure. Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which was just as they were told. Please stand with me and as we open our service in prayer. Father, we thank you for this, the Christmas story. We thank you for the angels. We thank you for the heavenly hosts. We thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit. Father, we ask that you would come in your fullness today and that our response would be that of the shepherds to praise you and glorify your holy name. We ask this in the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
God, we need you this morning. Lord, we need you this morning. We cannot do it by our own strength, God. We need you this morning, Lord. Open the heavens this morning, God. How many of us know in here this morning that he is able? He is able to do all things. How many of us know in this room this morning that he is able? Shout to the heavens this morning and say, he is able. Say, he is able. He is able. He is able. Come on, everybody's been pushing through something this week, and maybe even the last few weeks. This morning we're gonna push back. Hey, right, we don't give up. We're not gonna quit. We're not gonna stop. We're gonna keep on pushing. Because he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly all, all. The Bible says all, all, not some. I know we gotta get into a flow this morning. It's all right. We're gonna get there. Wake up our spirit man this morning, and it's gonna wake up our flesh, and we're gonna catch up, right? Hey.
said he would do just what he said he would do he's gonna fulfill every promise to you don't give up on God cause he won't give up on you I said, it is God who has me here this morning. He's able. He's able. The enemy was fighting me this morning to come here. He wanted me to sit, to sit in my feelings, in my emotions. But I wasn't allowing it. I miss my grandmother, but I know who she's with now. You know, if it wasn't for Pastor Doug praying for me yesterday, maybe I wouldn't have been here this morning. But he reminded me of who she's with. No more pain. No more suffering. She's dancing with Jesus right now. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I want you to know this morning, whether you realize it or you don't, that you don't have to leave here the same way you came. Amen. I want you to understand that we're not just singing songs up here. We believe what we're singing because we want to see miracles happen. We want to see lives changed and transformed. 
it's not just another song we're singing. That's why it's important when we come together that you open your mouth and you declare that for your own life. God is here.
I just want to encourage everyone here today. Guys, life is not easy, but it is good. One of the biggest things the enemy wants to steal from you is your peace. And the truth is, it's not your peace. The only way that you could be at peace is to let the Prince of Peace reign in your life. You can't lose. He tells us in 2 Peter chapter 1, he says, grace and peace are yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wait a minute. How much peace and grace does he want to give me? Abundantly. It doesn't mean that I'm in a peaceful situation abundantly. It means that I bring peace into every situation abundantly. And he's given you peace in abundance for you to give it away. One of the things that I praise God for, one of the biggest favors that I believe he's given me is that he allows me to bring his peace into someone's storm. Someone goes through a trial or a tribulation and God shows up through the presence of his people. But when I come in, I bring his peace. And it's so beautiful to watch the waves calm down. Brothers and sisters, it is a blessing. We need to assemble. And I pray even right now, Dear Jesus, we thank you that you are the Prince of Peace. And Lord, that doesn't mean that everything in our life is going to be in a peaceful setting. But we are going to be at peace in every setting. Because we know that you are above all authority and power in this age and the age to come. And Lord, that you are with us. You are for us that you love us. And Lord God, we thank you, Lord, that we are gonna to get to love you in every situation. And Lord, that your peace, Lord, will abound. Lord, that it will overflow to our children, to our children's children's children. Lord, that it would overflow to our coworkers. It would overflow to our spouse. It would overflow, Lord, to everywhere we go because you are with us. So, Lord God, I pray right now, 
Lord, that you're, Lord, I know it's not a question of you giving, it's a question of us receiving. Lord, I pray right now that you would, in, that you would instill a deeper faith through your Holy Spirit. That even right now, oh Lord, that you will deposit a greater understanding of peace. Lord, that you are the Prince of Peace, that you will give them a greater deposit of your presence in their life. And we thank you, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Give God some praise right now. Can we give God some praise right now? Hallelujah. Sometimes there's um, moments that some people might understand, and some people at the moment might not grasp it for the moment. There are these really cool little seeds that God drops from heaven for us. And those are these little prophetic moments. We call them prophetic moments. And this morning I see the heavens opening up upon our church, upon this land, upon our homes. We have been faithful. We've not been perfect, but we've been faithful. It's not about perfection. It's about you being faithful to your, your Father in heaven, to your God. And when you're faithful, he is faithful also to you. This church has been here for a long time. It has been faithful through the good times and through the bad times, through the ups and through the downs. We have had a faithful pastor in this church. Someone who has stuck with every moment through the good and through the bad, through the pretty and through the ugly. And I believe that in 2023, 
God is going to be faithful to this house. I believe that we will see breakthrough. Breakthrough that we have been praying for, that we haven't been able to see all of. But I believe that in this new year, we will see the breakthrough that we have been praying for. And I just wanted to share that with you. That in these moments, when those prophetic moments come, even if you might not understand it, or you might not be able to see it, ask God and he'll show you. Hallelujah. God is so good. His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for his amazing love and his amazing faithfulness. But I want to encourage you, don't take his faithfulness for granted because his word stands true. You will reap what you sow. He's given us seeds of life to sow and not into only our hearts, but others. You will reap what you sow. And hallelujah, I praise God for his faithfulness, for, his, for the confidence that we have in him, and for his truth that stands. Amen. And hallelujah, I praise God for the Christmas season that's coming up, that we celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And to celebrate that, we're going to have uh, Dan and Barb, they're doing the the next Advent reading and lighting of the uh, pink candle. So if uh, Dan and Barb, you come on up and lead us in that, that would be exciting. Hallelujah. And it'd be their first Christmas as a married couple. Amen. 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 That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. supposed to be the pink candle. Then, let me just transfer the flame here real quick. There we go. You had a 50-50 shot. Colorblind. Colorblind. <laughs> also, I, I just, on a personal note, I want to thank you all for your prayers. Your prayers make a big difference. You make a big difference. I praise God for each and every one of you. I praise God that he has brought you into my life and, and into the lives of everyone here. We're family. Thank you for your prayers. And I also just want to praise God for my daughter. Amen. Hallelujah. My wife keeps saying to me every Thursday they come back, she goes, you know, Doug, you got to have, have, have Liz preach. You got to have her preach. So I was sick, and I said, hey, honey, here's your opportunity. And she looks at me and goes, okay. And I was, that's my girl. That's my girl. And I praise God how she ministers to our youth so faithfully, how she prays for them, how she, 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 she loves them. 
and how God, I, I praise God for how he used her last week. And what a blessing. I'm so proud of you, honey. So proud of you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And here right now, um, this church is built on relationship. Our goal is that this is an organism more than an organization. We need organization, we need to be organized, but it's about being an organism. It's about being connected to one another. And please be praying, because we do love Christmas. We love the, the we want to do the, the living nativity. But we also, there is our, our brother. Kerry lost his grandmother this past week, who's around 96 years old. Her service, the wake is, is Friday, I, Friday or Saturday. Friday is, is the wake. And where is that going to be? We'll get information out. Um, because it's well, I, want, I'm, I need to be there. I'm going to be there because I love this family and I praise God for them. And because of that, see, we're not going to just go on with the program. <clears throat> we, 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 the truth is, I don't know when we're going to do the nativity. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Just don't know when. So we're going to send an email out. If we don't have your email address, please write it out and give it to one of the ushers so they can then give it to Jason and we can have that and we will get something to you because we may do it next Sunday. Personally, I wanna do it on the 25th. Personally, that's what I wanna do. I wanna, I figure, man, what a better, what a great time to do a live nativity than, sun, than on, Sunday, on, on Sunday morning. And it just so happens that this Sunday morning is Christmas morning. And it is really intriguing to me that people saying, are we having church? And I'm like, why wouldn't we have church? It's about Jesus, isn't it? It's all about Jesus. Hey, and, I, and trust me, I love family. You know, and, and I'm, I hesitate because I, I know I'm a preacher. I tend to preach. But, <laughs> but in Matthew 10, it says, don't, Jesus says, don't suppose I've come to bring peace. I've come with a sword. And it basically says, anyone's going to come after me, you got to love me more than anyone else. I'm going to be here on Christmas morning, and I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So when we're doing the nativity, don't know. But I know we're doing it. And I know it's going to be out of this world. And I also just thank God for the creative minds, the decorations, the setting. Beautiful. Hallelujah. So with that, thank God. And also, uh, a week from this Tuesday, the men are having a uh, special thing. We're going to be going to a elderly home. That's our goal. Um, and we're going to sing some Christmas carols. We're just going to sing and just praise the Lord uh, for about an hour. And then we're going to go out and have a night. We're going to go out to a nice restaurant and have a nice meal together and to celebrate one another. So that's going to be next Tuesday. We're going to uh, we'll get information out whether we're going to meet there or meet here and drive out together, but that'll be forthcoming. Uh, women's ministry. Is there any special announcements with the ministry with the women's ministry? No. Nope. Okay. They'll be okay. The women will be cooking and cleaning and taking care of everything else while the men are out. Yeah. Thank you so much, women. We praise God for you. What a great blessing you are. Hallelujah. And uh, the other ministries are are full are in full swing. The, all the ministry is going on this week, so uh, with this, we're going to uh, just uh, uh, have our kids head off for Kids Church, and the ushers, if you would receive the morning offering. Thank you.
dear Lord and Heavenly Father, thank you for your favor. Thank you that you are with us. And Lord God, we, we ask that you would forgive us for the times that we try to lead you. But Lord, we thank you that you don't follow us, you lead us. Lord, may we walk in the light. May we practice what we, what we hear. May we put into practice what we hear today. And Lord God, I ask that you would be with us and guide us, oh Lord, strengthen us. And Lord, Lord, I pray that you would receive, Lord, our tithes and our offerings with favor and that we would continue to walk in the favor of your presence. And Lord, that you would expand your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You are here moving in darkness I worship Worship you. you are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here moving in darkness. I worship you. I worship. Working in this place, I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Yeah. Way maker, miracle. don't see it you're working even when I can't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working Get that 
your spirit. He never stops working. He never stops working. He never stops working. That is. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, how I thank you for the way that you are the way, the truth and the life. And dear Lord and Father, Lord, I know in my heart, Lord, right now, Lord, that there are people who have lost their way in this room. Lord, they're in a situation they don't know where to turn. But I thank you, Lord, that even now there is a light beginning to shine in that situation, and that light is you. And Lord God, I pray that they would turn toward that light. Lord, that you have a way, not just for them to escape the situation, but to overcome the situation, to become more mature, more complete, that they will grow Oh, Lord God, through this situation, and Lord, that you will take the stumbling block that the enemy has put in their path and turn it into a building block. So, Lord God, I thank you right now for the way that the light of your love is shining through, even now, Lord, in this situation, to give them hope. Lord, the enemy has stolen their hope. Lord God, I pray that they would receive, Lord, that you are their hope. You are Lord, the source of all good things. Bless them. Bless us, O oh Lord, with that light that leads us and guides us in every step. We thank you, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I praise God for his peace. I praise God for the way that he moves. I praise God for the plans that he has for you. He has a plan for you. Not just in this world, but in the kingdom to come. He's got a plan, but we got to follow it. We got to follow it. And with that, I, I, what a blessing to have Juwan come and to, to bring the word. And this is a very powerful word. And so I'm not going to say anything else because otherwise I, I might give it away. But anyway, here, so here. So dear Lord and Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for Juwan. I thank you, Lord, for the way that you reveal mysteries to him, for the way that you, oh, Lord God, the way that you love him, the way that you strengthen him in his inner being. And Lord God, I thank you that you are the reason he doesn't surrender or give up. And dear Lord and Father, I thank you for your Holy Spirit that has been tuning his heart, Lord, for this message today. Lord God, I pray that your word would use him well. 
And Lord, that you, Lord, that your word would stir in the hearts of your children here today. And Lord, that we would not just hear them and deceive ourselves, but we would do what, what, what we hear them say. And Lord God, I pray that even now, Lord, today, that you would surprise Juan. That you would, oh Lord, just come upon him. Lord, with your favor and your glory, strengthen him, oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Good morning. God bless you. We serve a, a mighty God who is faithful, kind, and understanding. And you know, I stand before you right now humbled humbled because I, when I'm in the presence of God, I realize how much I am not him and how much I need him. I don't know about you, but it, it, has, it has been a very trying three weeks, surviving COVID, surviving the flu and everything between. But God is good because last year I was in the hospital and this year I was not. <laughs> Amen. And despite of all that we go through, there's a lot to be thankful for. And it's important that we don't allow Satan to steal the thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. That we're able to see those little things that are just so wonderful in our lives. Don't let the problems magnify to the point where it blots out all the great things. There's so much going on in this environment right now spiritually. All of us, individuals, the church, collectively, corporately, but individually going through different things in this time and season. There's new hope coming. There's families being restored, but that was after a tragedy individuals who take advantage of our hearts and trying not to allow our hearts to become hardened because of it. All these different things we face, all these different challenges that we face, we find ourselves in this seating, season needing God now more than ever. I often say I need Jesus more today than I did yesterday. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning about something very important because I believe that we are in a transition. And we've talked about this for quite a bit, but can you say that we as a church are in preparation? You as individuals are in preparation. You are in preparation for something that God has for you in the next season. And all that you're going through right now, the, the mental challenges, the, the physical challenges, all these different and some things unusual that is happening in your life is preparing you for what is to come. So do not lose heart. But hear what the Lord is saying this morning. And Lord, I pray that I can get this across the way you gave it to me. For you speak so well. And if I can just, just give half of that or a part of that, I will be good. So we're going to look at Nehemiah chapter 1. And we're going to read verse 1 to 11. And I pray, Lord, don't allow this laptop to give me any issues this morning. <laughs> Because then the prophetic flow will have to begin. <laughs> Amen. Let's read the word of God. And forgive me for the pronunciation of some of these names. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakila. Hakila. Hak I always say these names wrong, but bear with me and hear what the Lord is saying. It came to pass in the month of Chisel. In the 20th year, as I was in Shuzan, 
the citadel, that Hanani, one of my brethren, came with men from Judah. And I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down, and its gates are burned with fire. So it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for days. Watch this. I was fasting and praying before God of heaven. And I said, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your, sir, your, your covenant and your mercy with those who you love, you and observe your commandments. Please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now, day and night. For the children of Israel, your servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Both my father's house and I have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinance which you commanded your servant Moses. Remember, I pray the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, Though some of you were cast out to the furthest part of the heavens, yet I will gather them from there and bring them to a place which I have chosen as dwelling for my name. Now these are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. O oh Lord, I pray Please let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant, to the prayer of your servants who desire to fear your name, and let your servant prosper this day, I pray, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the king's cupbearer. Father, thank you for the reading of your word. Nehemiah, also spelled Nehemiah's was a Jewish leader who supervised the rebuilding of Jerusalem in the mid-5th century B.C. after his release from captivity by the Persian king, Xerxes. Nehemiah, one of Israel's great leaders, tells firsthand the powerful story of rebuilding ancient Jerusalem walls after the exile. In the face of great odds, this rebuilding represented the people's renewal of faith, their overcoming of national shame, and the reforming of their conduct, instituted extensive moral and liturgical reforms in rededicating the Jews to Yahweh. After hearing the news of his home, Nehemiah was burdened. Turn to your neighbor and say, he was burdened. He was burdened. You know what it's like to be burdened by something, whether tragic or problematic. A burden is a burden. And sometimes that burden can very well be the incentive to push you into your calling. Amen? Amen. Nehemiah didn't become anxious and tried running to Jerusalem impulsively, emotionally making bad decisions because of his burden. But instead, he did what we all should do when we run into these situations. He brought it to the Lord. And he brought it in a way in which I am preaching from this morning. The title of today's message is Through Prayer and Fasting. Amen. Amen. 
Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, we thank you. We honor you this morning. We bless the name of Jesus in this house and we declare that he is Lord. Holy Spirit, we need you. We invite you. We ask you to have your way. I pray that I would decrease in this moment and that you will increase. I pray that you will be with the wind in my body and that you will allow me to deliver what you have sent me here this morning to do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Nehemiah was positioning, petitioning God to do what was done for Israel when they were in Egypt and gather his people in a place. After praying and fasting for months, God responded. We are in a season where our nation is no longer slowly changing, but rapidly changing before our very eyes. We are seeing our rights being violated. We are being forced to believe things that are not right and being forced to encourage individuals' identity crisis. The list goes on and on. In our own personal lives, we are dealing with sickness and disease that arise out of nowhere. Cost of food and heat and supplies needed for everyday life is rising. Our trusted leaders whom we've entrusted with our lives, normal language has become a lying tongue. Marriages is viewed just as another relationship. And more and more marriages are being facilitated by the justice of the peace because folks are losing their trust for the church and are becoming sensitive to basic moral accountability. And now it has become offensive, even to Christians. Our society has become an honorless society. Our church has become an honorless church. And everyone wants to be the leader, even when they don't have the grace to be it. For the biggest duty of being a leader is not just telling people what to do or being their master, but rather the opposite, becoming their servant. You will give more than you get. You will love more than you are loved. And you cannot be easily offended. However, if you have God's grace, you are safe because his grace is sufficient. The demonic strongholds on individuals' lives, both in the church and out, are alarming. Our youth are dealing with anxiety at a level that has not been seen before. A research article from Georgetown University reports a rise in anxiety and depression among children three years old to 17. It has increased over five years. Even before the pandemic, anxiety in adolescence has increased 27% and 24% respectively from 2016 to 2019. By 2020, 5.6 million kids, that's 9.2% have been diagnosed with anxiety problems from three to 17 years old. 2.4 million, that's 4%, have been diagnosed with depression. Three to 17 years old. So, now that I have raised the awareness, we find ourselves in a place where we are in desperate need. For maybe our walls are not burning and torn down. But the walls of protection from the spirit of the enemy are. In church, we must rebuild them. We must rebuild the wall of protection Amen. from the spirit of the enemy in this season. Amen. And through prayer and fasting, we will accomplish much. So let us get into some scripture. Amen? You with me? All right. Praise God. Most of us know that as we are going into 2023, we are beginning our annual fast, January 2nd to the 22nd. And I feel that this fast is going to be one of the most important fasts that we have done 
in this house. And for a lot of us individually, I believe this is going to be one of the most important fasts we have actually done in our lives. And, and, I'll, and I'll prove this by throwing this out there. Has, have you seen the things that are happening now? Have you seen this before in your lifetime? Okay, then that speaks it right there. We are in a season. But it's not a season for us to be afraid. Amen. It is a season for us to be strategic. It's a season for us to be aware and prepared and ready to fight, not from a defensive, but from an offensive. For God has given us the plan already in his word. We have all that we need to fight this battle, but it must start at the feet of Jesus. So this morning, I want to dive into this lifestyle of through prayer and fasting. And there's some questions that folks might have that, by the grace of God, I would like by the Holy Spirit to answer. So first question, what is a lifestyle of prayer and fasting? Please understand the Lord wants us to enter the fast with the right mindset. And I'll explain why as we go along. The author, Philip Reiner, in his book, A Fasted Life, writes, it's not about sacrificing food, but a lifestyle of quieting the flesh to say yes to the voice of God. Amen? Amen. So there is sacrifice, which God is pleased with. But although food may be one of the items that's removed from a portion of time, it's not merely about that. It's more so it's more about the consecration of your heart. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. And let's take this apart. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. Bless you, brother. <coughs> a living sacrifice. Key word in this passage. Because sacrifice is necessary in relationship. Amen. Sacrifice tells the person. Sacrifice shows the person that you love them. Amen. And sometimes in relationship, as time goes by, as, as you grow in your relationship, those sacrifices may become a little more. But they're necessary. And the reward is great. Amen? Amen. So we sacrifice ourselves, for we are holy. For we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit resides in us. And we sacrifice ourselves daily by consecrating our heart to God. And it pleases God. It pleases God for us to do this, holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. We are to be holy. We are to be set apart. So during this time in fasting, we need to find ourselves in a place where we're not connected with those things that we usually are connected with when we're not fasting. And hopefully during that time, it will become a lifestyle. So someone might say, well, Jawan, how do you know I don't already walk right? How do you know I don't already walk uprightly? I'll say this. Every day of your life, all right, so at work, I manage a region. And when we have new staff, I have them shadow another staff. What about if Jesus was to shadow you for a week? He walked with you. He went with you. He hung out with you at the supermarket. At night when you went down and you turned on Netflix, he watched it with you. Would you be comfortable or uncomfortable if he did that? Whatever you answer, that's your answer. 
And it doesn't mean we're bad people. It just means that we live in a world that's corrupted. And although we live in it, we're not to be of it. But it's hard not to be of something when you are around it all the time. So how do you separate yourself from something that's everywhere you look? You have to strategically and intentionally do it. And you have to crucify this flesh that desires it. This is why it's necessary for us to do it for change. Let's look at the history and significance of fasting. It's not going to be up there, but listen very carefully. Moses fasted before receiving the commandments. Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 9 through 18. You can look at this through your own time. Moses fasted for 40 days when he went up to the mountain to receive the commandments of God written on the stone of tablets. Your homework would be to find out why did he fast to do that. I'll leave that between you and the Holy Spirit. Two, David, mourning his child's illness. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 through 23 after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba, he learned that she was pregnant. David had her husband executed. It's awful. Just because he wanted her, he had her husband executed. Then Nathan, the prophet Nathan, confronted David about it. David confessed and repented. 2 Samuel 12, 1 through 14. Even though David repented before God, there were still consequences for his actions. The prophet told David that the child would die. After the prophet left, the young boy became very ill. David immediately went into prayer and fasting for his son. He knew that God said the child would die, but he hoped that God might find grace in this situation. He prayed and he fasted because he knew that the sacrifice of that is worthy to God. But it also puts him in a spiritual place to be able to hear and receive. This was his first place to go after hearing this awful news that his child was going to die. Ezra fasted while mourning over sin. Ezra chapter 10, verse 16, 6 to 17, the Jews began to return to Israel after the Babylonian captivity, yet they had disobeyed God's law during their captivity. Ezra gathered the people together to confront them for their sins. Ezra chapter 6, 10, verse 6 does not say specifically how long he fasted, though there is indication that he lasted at least three days while he was waiting for the people to gather. Four, Darius, in the book of Daniel. Daniel, one of the major prophets, and I, I, I chose this particular scripture because we hear about Daniel fasting, but Amazingly, King Darius fasted. Amen. He wasn't, he, was, he wasn't a Jew. This wasn't his thing. But he found favor in God through the man of God. And I just thought it was powerful. King Darius was tricked into signing a law that put his friend David, uh, Daniel sorry, in grave danger. And the law proposed that for 30 days no one could pray to or ask help from any deity of power except the king. The men who wrote the law that Daniel prayed knew that Daniel prayed three times a day. So they tried to trick Daniel because they knew that he would fall into this punishment. So the punishment for the crime was to be cast into the den of lions. And of course, Daniel was caught, brought to the king. The king was deeply grieved because he had no choice. He's a sovereign king. He could not go back on his word. It's like when God makes a decree. What he says cannot be taken back. For his word is higher than his own name. So in this instance, now Daniel is in the, the cave of the lions. 
And King Darius is grieved, and he goes back to his house, and the word says he fasted. We don't necessarily know how he fasted, but he fasted. And in the morning, he ran down to the dungeon to see Daniel, and he sees that Daniel is perfectly fine. And he says, oh, Daniel, how your king saved you from the mouths of the lion. And Daniel says this as the faithful man of God that he is. He says, oh, king, live forever. (laughs) For my God has found that I've done no wrong to both him nor you. Faithfulness is necessary. Faithfulness is what this is all about. I love when you said that, Lisa. It's not about perfection, for we can never be perfect, but we serve a perfect God. But if we can be faithful, hmm, that is powerful. Thank you we have a God who doesn't ask for too much. But thank you because of Jesus Christ, he doesn't have to. Mm. More questions. Why do we fast in 2022? I'm going to answer these questions just with scripture. Why do we fast in 2022? Well, Mark chapter 2, verse 18 to 22 says this. The disciples of John and of the Pharisees were fasting. Then they came and said to him, Why do the disciples of John and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, can the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom, the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them and they will fast in those days. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, or else the new piece pulls away from the old and the tears is made worse. And no one puts new wine into old wineskin, or else the new wine bursts the wineskins. The wine is spilled and the wineskins are ruined. But new wine must be put into new wineskins. Amen? They didn't need to fast because the one they needed to be like was already there with them. But when he was gone, well, now he sent the Holy Spirit, which we'll we'll talk about a little more. He sent the Holy Spirit that he promised in John 14 and 16. And that Holy Spirit comes here to teach us to be more like the Christ. But fasting and prayer helps us to be more sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is trying to speak to us in in this particular moment. Amen? Next question. How do we fast properly for God? Let's look at Matthew chapter 6, 16 to 18. We're going through a lot of scripture today, but it's necessary because I want you to understand what it is we're doing and why it's important that we need to do it. Moreover, When you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with your sad continence. Oh, look at me, I'm fasting. Oh, I'm so holy, look at me. For they did with their disfigured faces, you know, like. No. That they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, They have their reward. But you, when you fast, when you fast, anoint your head with oil. Anoint your head with oil. And So anoint your head with oil and wash your face so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to the Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Why do you anoint your head? You anoint your head, anointing the oil, 
was used to consecrate, to separate yourself. You're consecrating yourself and you're saying that I am yours. So you're anointing yourself, but then you don't want to be walking around with a greasy cross on your face all day. So you go and you wash it off because the anointing is between you and God. See, how can I put this? All right. So a person who, imagine the person who wants to be recognized, right? Like, oh, look at me. I'm fasting. Look how holy I am. Watch me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Worship me. That's what's happening inside. Outwardly, they're gently, look at me. I'm worshiping. But inside, they're, look at me. Worship me. Give me the glory, not him. See, we see out here, but in the inside, there's something else dwelling. Something more mean and ugly and nasty that if you saw it, you probably wouldn't partake in half of the stuff that you do. But this is also why we fast and pray, so that we're able to see into the spirit realm. So we're able to see into the demonic world. That we're able to discern both good and evil, both beautiful and ugly, spiritually. Sorry. Thank God that was closed. That would have been a tough elder meeting. What to expect from fasting? Speed up, Juan. John 6, verse 35. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. <laughs> and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Why, what to expect from fasting? That's it. There's more, but what, what's better than that? You would never hunger. You would never thirst. But there is more. One, for intimacy with God will be restored, established, and sharpened. Two, you will become more sensitive to the things that grieve the Holy Spirit. Also the things that he loves. And, he, and, and it will heighten your ability to hear, enter into the throne room through, while you're praying and fasting. I mean, worshiping. So your sensitivity will be to the point that when you're worshiping, you'll be able to enter in a lot quicker. When you pray, you'll be able to enter in a lot quicker. You won't have those dry moments where you're just sitting here like, I don't feel anything. Really quickly, when I fasted years ago, years ago, I, I was fasting. I uh, woke up about 4, 4, 5.30 in the morning, which I typically do when I'm fasting. And while I'm in the middle of reading, the Lord told me, go brush your teeth, go wash your face, don't get in the shower, get dressed, go in the car and wait for instruction. I did so. I got in my car. I was living in, in uh, Brooklawn in Bridgeport at the time. I get in my car, and he tells me to go, and I start driving. He told me to turn this way, this way, this way. I ended up on Brookside Avenue and Greenfield Hill in Fairfield. It is dark when I get out my car. There's a stream right there. I walk to the stream. He told me to turn this way. It was like diagonal to the stream. There was a stop sign. No one was there. He told me to lift my hands. I lift my hands, and I started praying. And then next thing you know, I started worshiping. Next thing you know, the sun started to rise, and now people are going to work. And I'm standing there with my arms up, worshiping. Let's keep it real. A 6'2", 230-pound black man in the middle of Greenfield Hill with his arms up. Now, I'm aware, right? I'm aware of all these things. These are real stuff that goes on in your mind. Come on. We know where we are. Let's not, let's, not, let's not be, you know, fake about it. This is going on in my mind. So now I have to keep myself mentally but be obedient to God. But I'm fasted. So my sensitivity is more to God than the people passing. So I'm sitting there and my arms is up. To make matters worse, it starts drizzling. <laughs> now it's drizzling and I'm sitting here trying not to be blind by the, by the rain. And next thing you know, it just starts raining. Now, the sun's up, 
Traffic is now there. I'm next to the stream, my arms up, and I'm singing, I'm worshiping, and I'm like, why am I doing this? Next thing you know, he tells me to read Psalm 34. I recited it in my mind. David said, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him, and their faces were radiant. The poor man cried out, and he delivered him from all his troubles. Once I did that, the Spirit of God came upon me. I started crying. Now I'm crying in the rain with my arms up in traffic. And then I begin to speak for the first time in a heavenly language. For the first time in Fairfield, Connecticut, in Greenfield Hill, on Brookside Avenue, I spoke in tongue. And I'm telling you, nobody can't tell me it sounds Hebrew. I have no witnesses, but I'll believe it was. <laughs> Amen. So let me skip down here uh, for the sake of time. Thank you for your grace. I want to give wisdom during this time. And these, this is the wisdom I would love to impart. Don't fast aimlessly. In Daniel chapter 2, King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, and he wanted that dream interpreted. That responsibility fell upon the prophet Daniel. Daniel went home and asked his friends to seek the mercies of God. Later on, God responded and gave Daniel the interpretation of the dream. And Daniel was able to tell the king the dream. Now, in that particular passage, it doesn't necessarily say that Daniel was fasting. But we know from the, pa from the chapter previous and the ones thereafter that Daniel lived, at a fa lived a fasted life. So God's response to Daniel is not uncommon. Shed the dead skin. What do I mean by this? When you are fasting, you're going to be in a sensitive place, okay? So there's things that you wouldn't have normally done that you will do. For instance, let's bring Netflix back into it. It's my issue, so. So, Netflix, the Word of God. Netflix, the Word of God. So, in your mind, you're like, Netflix got a new show coming on but I really could be using this time to read the word of God. Now, when you're not fasting or you're not in that sensitive place, you might go, I'm going to watch that show. But when you're in that consecrated place, your sensitivity to God is there. So even though you want to go, your spirit man pulls you to the word and you go to the word. Now, when you do that, that is you starting a healthy spiritual habit. Shed the dead skin. Take that way you used to be and take it off so that when the fast is over you don't go back to it shed the dead skin and allow yourself to grow if you go back to it just one time you'll fall the flesh is not made to play with you understand what I'm saying this flesh is at enmity with God it is not God's friend. So we must strengthen, strengthen the spirit. We can actually, if you could partner with me, um, we're going to bring this thing to a close. <coughs> I'm so sorry. There's so much that I wanted to share in this. But there will be another time. Lastly, have expectation every day. Have expectation. Expectation is part of your faith. When the disciples were in the upper room, they were in the upper room and they were waiting for the promise that I mentioned that Jesus spoke in John chapter 14 and 16. They were waiting for the promise of the Holy Spirit to come. In Acts chapter 2, the promise came. But they waited every day with expectation that God was going to fulfill his promise. So when you enter this thing, do not enter it not believing that God will not be faithful. He will be faithful. 
Daniel, in Daniel chapter 10, he ate no food nor drank no wine. He was waiting for God to give him something. And although it took a few weeks due to spiritual confrontation, God was faithful. God was faithful to Daniel, just as God will be faithful to you, just as God was faithful to Nehemiah. Closing scripture. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 1 through 6. Nehemiah finds himself in the presence of the king, and he's grieved, and he's sad, and the king has never seen him this way before. And the king asked him, why? Why is your face sad since you were not sick? This is nothing but sorrow of heart. Nehemiah says, so I became dreadfully afraid and said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad when the city, the place of my father's tombs, lies waste and its gates burned with fire? Now the word says that the king said, but I will say it was God that said through the king, what do you request? This was God's faithfulness to Nehemiah. What do you request? And just to make a long story short, he then provides Nehemiah with not just the okay to go and rebuild the wall, but he gave him all the resources in abundance to do it. One of the most powerful messages of Nehemiah is how much you can accomplish when you align yourself with the plan of God for your life. Amen. Nehemiah and his followers do what seems to be impossible because they are doing what God has called them to do. You don't have to rebuild a wall, but align yourself with God. Enter this fast with the might right mindset and seek God's mercies for what he is calling you to do in this season. Nehemiah was considered to be a great leader. He, it wasn't because he had an Ivy League education. In the natural, he wasn't even qualified probably to be it. For his job was to die in the place of the king if the king was ever, if there was an attempt to assassinate him through poisoning him. But God, but God being the God that he is, he's the one that could turn a slave into a master, a servant into a ruler. I want to ask you a question this morning. Are you ready to walk in a new measure of faithfulness in this season of your walk? Are you tired of the mundane? Are you tired of the same old routine? Are you tired of dreaming and not seeing those dreams manifest in the natural? Are you tired of the same old problems and issues and battles arising all the time? Are you tired of responding to those battles and those issues in the same way? Are you tired of being that person who finds themselves not really living in the privilege in which God has set for you. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. There are children looking at you. There are neighbors looking at you. You are their only hope. You are Jesus in the natural for them. Nothing else matters. God set you apart and chose you and brought you to this place not to be someone that just fills the seats so you can listen to someone talk about something that you can open up the word and see for yourself. But he brought you here this morning so you could be part of an organism that is called to bring the world back to his creator. You are more than what your job title is at work. You are more than what you look in the mirror and see. 
But to get there, friends, it is going to require sacrifice. And it's going to require you to crucify this flesh. We cannot go into 2023 with 2022's issues. Because although we may stay the same or change, this world is changing. And we're not just being prepared because of some awesomeness that we are just supposed to be. We're being prepared for also what's becoming of this world. And your light bulb is being brightened. You're being turned into LED lights. And you're going to illuminate because you are beautiful. You are beautiful. There is no problem, circumstance, or situation that can change that. You just got to see it. You just got to see it. If you can see yourself the way God sees you, you will be a steamroller over every problem and circumstance that arises in your life. Everyone standing, please. There's going to be three types of people. The first person is going to say, okay, that was a pretty decent word. He was a little energetic. And you're going to walk out this sanctuary, and you're going to go home. And God will get you. He'll minister to you a different way. But he'll get you. And then the second person is like, I don't understand everything, but it touched me. If you're that person, I pray that God will minister this continually as you are heading home. But then there's the third person that says, no, I hear you, Lord. I hear you loud and clear. I want a deeper intimacy with you because the way things were for me yesterday, what I experienced the past week, the past month, the past year, I don't want that for my future. I don't want that for the future of my children. God, I received the instruction this morning. I'm going to crucify this flesh. I'm going to enter into this season and this fast with the right mindset. And I am going to walk the way you want me to with the help of the Holy Spirit and the help of my brethren. If you are that person, please raise your hand. Don't worry about the person next to you, but worry about the person next to you. <sighs> Spirit of the living God, my Father and my King, God, we love you the way that we know how. But I believe, Lord, this morning we desire to love you with a greater passion, a greater intimacy, because we're coming to the understanding that we cannot do this life without you. And Lord, the mistakes, we make mistakes every day, but God, please help us to get back up. Please help us to, to repent and to get back within your good standings. Please help us to be able to be sensitive to the things that are good and the things that are bad for our lives. Please help us to stop falling into the same sins. God, I pray right now in Jesus' name that this season will be the season that we begin to walk in our privilege and walk in our calling, walk in our purpose, and that we will see the fruit from that in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, with that being said, I pray an extra measure of grace in this season. I pray for restoration. I pray for deliverance. I pray, Lord God, that you will bring your people into a new season of their lives and that joy shall abound and that you will get the glory for all of it. 
and we thank you for it, and we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. and shake before the demons run and flee at the mention of your name king of majesty
I'm just going to ask everybody, just, just give me three more minutes. Brother, come here for me, please. Yes, you. Don't be afraid. Come. Actually, your whole family, come down. All of you guys, come on. Don't be afraid. Come on, come right here. I grew, I grew up in a large family. I have 36 first cousins, and we all grew up together. I was the youngest, and sometimes they would pop me upside my head playing around. But there's one thing that did happen. Nobody messed with me because of all 35 of them. The enemy's trying to bully, and he's trying to bring a fleet to bully this brother because of the anointing that is upon his life because of what God is going to call him to do in the right season. This is our brother. This is our cousin. And nobody's going to mess with him on our watch. So I ask everyone to extend your hands to him right now. This right here is called covering. You are covered by the spirit of the living God, by Jesus Christ and all his followers. We guard you, we protect you, we stand in the gap for you. And we declare that you are victorious. You are a lion. And we declare that in this season, that the night that you were called to be, that the warrior that you will be in Christ will manifest in this season and it will come out and you will be everything that God has called you to be. We rebuke every, every, every thought of the enemy that tries to come and put opposing thoughts and ideas in your mind. We cancel every assignment against your life, against your peace, against your calling. And we stand in the gap for you that you shall be healthy and whole and filled with the Lord's peace. And that you shall walk into this season with grace and accomplishment. For you are God's and you are part of the body of Christ. May you find your way and may you be powerful while you're doing it. In Jesus' name, we thank you, God. Brothers and sisters, we have one life. We have one life to show God how much we love Him. This is not our dress rehearsal. It could be the final curtain. What is your life going to declare? What is it that your life is going to show that you are hungry for? Whatever you feed will grow. We're going to be starving some things in these coming days because they need to die. They need to die. Jesus wants to start reigning and living. I am excited. I love adventure. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be out of this world. Brothers and sisters, strengthen yourself in the Lord. Eddie, I want to give you that staff in your hand because that staff represents authority. It represents position. It represents power. He's given you all a staff. He's given you his word. He's given you his heart. He's given you his son. He's given you his Holy Spirit. Let's tune ourselves. Let's feed the spirit. Let's feed that 
relationship with Jesus Christ and let him guide you in strengthening your other relationships to turn them from roles to relationships. So dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Lord, for the way that you're getting our attention. Lord God, I pray that we don't have to be like Israel that were enslaved for 400 years before they started to pray. And Lord, when they prayed, you sent your messenger, you sent freedom to them. And dear Lord and Father, we thank you that you want to send freedom to us. Guide us, oh Lord, as we pray. Lord, Lord, come ignite our hearts. Lord, lead us through the power of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, that we would be wholly devoted to you. Oh Lord, that we would be strengthened with all power according to your glorious might. And we will not be afraid. And we will not react, but we will respond. And we thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord. I declare your blessing, your peace and abundance upon your people. Lord, guide them and strengthen them as you transform them. Oh, Lord, that there will no longer be, Lord, conditioned to their programming of the past. But, Lord, you're going to set them free by the renewing of their mind. Lord, as they fast, Lord, they're going to hear you like they've never heard you before. They're going to experience you like they've never experienced you before. And, oh, Lord God, we thank you for that. Lord, guide us and bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Walk with your king and be his blessing. Anyone need prayer? We'd love to pray for you. God bless you all. We love you. and crew of the uh, the nativity meet outside uh, in uh, Kellogg's Hall real quick for a brief meeting and uh, we'll get more instruction there. Thank you all.